Hi, my name is Adolfo. I'm gonna talk about the post office and a couple of things you guys need to learn when you're starting. Um, the first thing is, of course, you're gonna take the test. After the test, you're gonna be going to an interview. By that time, especially if it's during uh, December and everything, they're gonna try to be in a rush to put you in at work because that's when most of the workload is happening. Now, what do I think about the post office and everything? Or is it hard or is it easy? Th that question is up to you because I cannot tell you it's easy or it's hard because if you're from a cubicle, if you're coming from cubicle work, desk work and everything, of course it's gonna get, be harder. If you're coming from um, a hard labor, blue collar job, it might be the same, it might be harder, it might be easier. Now, you're gonna get the, you're gonna be versatile at the beginning. Basically, every casing that they have, they call them casings, you're gonna be the one rotating, you're gonna be moving around. Unless you're a little bit more senior, which I doubt it, they're gonna have you in one cubic, uh, in one uh, casing. If not, you're gonna be moving around. Now, you may say, what is a casing? A casing is basically, your route, but you're, you're casing it. Now, on this scenario, it depends because uh, the city, the actual city next to us, the CCAs do not case. Uh, they come in around eight, uh, nine or 10, and then they, they, uh, everything is already set up for them. And once it's set up, they just drive around and they learn the route while driving. In my city, actual city, because the casings are called cities, but when I say actual city, I mean the actual city I was working in, we case. Now, for me, casing is the hardest thing to do. What's the hardest thing to do? At the beginning. At the end, because I did quit, and I'll tell you the story why I quit it and everything later on. Which is not bad if you want to work uh, the post office. The post office is a good job, good paying, depending on what kind of pay you're asking for. Now, if you're asking for, we'll say, $30 an hour, of course, not good pay. If you've been working at a $10, $11, then of course it's good pay. Because everybody needs to understand, uh, $1 more that you get paid, that's like $2,000 more a year you're earning. So, yes, it's a good pay. Especially $11 to $16, that's a $5 difference, that's $10,000 in a whole year. Plus... Uh, the post office has a good pay chart. Basically, there's overtime, of course. There's overtime in a, in a day, not only in a 40-hour a week, but in a day, and there's double overtime. Now, back to the main subject about is it easy, is it hard, and how everything works. So basically, once you're in um, the post office, you're... The first thing you go in is check your vehicle because you don't want to be doing everything, throwing everything in the vehicle. I believe they call it uh, Um You don't want to be throwing everything. Next thing you know, it's a flat tire or it doesn't work. They might be mad at you afterwards. Then after that, it depends how you, your, um, if they follow it by, by the book. For us, uh, we go throw, if there's a lot of... Uh, parcels we go get them in we put them in the truck and then we start getting all of our letters and everything all the loose ones of course I forgot what they call them and you start casing them the magazines and so on like I said the the, the hardest thing is casing at the beginning I was nervous at the beginning uh, I thought I was finished but then there were two more boxes full of uh, mail that I had in the back. Then, right after that, I was doing a drive route, a driving route. Those are easy, by the way. Depending also, because some of them, they also have that one driving route that is long. And it's like an eternity route. Uh, eternity uh, route. And then they got these walking routes. And they also have these routes that are very, very hard. Well, not very, very hard, but a lot of walking, okay? Uh, for me, I used to like the walking ones. They, didn't, they never knew that because 
everybody hated him. For me, it's good. I, I was losing weight. As a matter of fact, I gained, uh, I want to say in four months after I quit it, I gained about 30, 40 pounds because I was walking a lot. I, you don't realize how much you walk until you have a blister, over a blister, over a blister on your feet. You know, you're just walking and walking and you're just trying to finish that route at a specific time. Because if you don't finish at a specific time, that means that the semis that is picking all the uh, the mail from your location is gone. So now you gotta go deliver it to the plant. I never did that. I always try to make it on time. But there was that one number one day that I was doing my first walking route. It's the one that everybody said, said it was the hardest. The hardest thing about a walking route, of course, is the walking. But the second hardest thing is find, finding the, the boxes every time. Because you're walking, you're walking, and your adrenaline is running and everything. You feel that kind of a little bit of pressure because you're still on probation. And you're trying to make it. And next thing you know, you can't find the mailbox. Because not everybody has the mailbox right there by the door. And some of them, they have them on the ground. They have them everywhere. Um, you're dodging dogs, you're dodging everything, and you're trying to, one little wrong turn on the, on the route, you're basically losing negative minutes. It, it ain't like an a ROV or, or a little car, those uh, mail cars, that you wasted the three minutes, guess what, you step on the gas faster. You're trying to cash up. So, that route, the first time I did it, I struggled, like literally big time struggled. I was only done with like one third of the route and I was already like two or three. I could tell that um, the other CCA that got there, he was calling. Um, I'm not gonna say there's a lot of backstabbing, uh, shit talking behind your back and everything, but when you go to the break room and they're talking shit about the other guy, the other CCA, the odds are that when you're not there, they're talking shit about you. That's just plain and honestly. Uh, that's my assumption. Especially it's not only one CCA they're talking about, the other one or the other one. So I'm going to tell you how to be fast. Casing, you have to learn it. You have to perfect it. You have to, for me, I used to go there and try to memorize it a day before. And then when I start casing, everything is just, I ain't going to lie. I thought, I was surprised how everything was going because I, I kind of learned all the routes. They call cities, like I said. I learned how to case them fast. Not fast, fast, but enough time to get out of there. And the reason I say that is because I'm going to give a, a, a shard here. We'll say that you get there at, um, at we'll say, 8 o'clock you start working. And you have to start casing, checking the vehicle and everything. You're clocking in. The main thing is I'll give you an example on my on my route. Eight o'clock is the time I arrive. Ten o'clock is the time everybody's leaving to the route. The key, the number one thing for me was always casing. And the reason I say casing was the number one. Because if I push this 10 o'clock leaving route to 11, that means that this gap is no longer a six hour gap. 1600 is uh, uh, 4, 4 p.m. 10 to uh, 4 p.m. equals six hours. So now you gotta finish that route in five hours to make it on time. Imagine that now it's 12. So you're basically closing the gap. And on a walking route, it's hard to be leaving late, later. You got to find every little tweak, every little trick on how to finish the route fast. And, and I think always, I always thought that if I left at 10, no matter how much parcels, how much of everything, uh, magazines, uh, ads, or whatever they call those, ad rolls, ad or whatever they were called, um, the faster, if I left at 10 or before 10, I knew I was going to get done fast. If the semi truck 
that brought the mail in came in late. I knew I was going to be late. If I wasn't finished casing on time, I knew I was going to be late coming back. No matter how easy the route is, well, depending. Some routes, you can finish them fast. Especially on non at world days because you basically um, only have uh, two, 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 uh, one tray over here. No, two trays. The one that you cased and the one that already comes in. So you don't need to worry about the third case when you're driving. Also walking, you don't need to worry about carrying that extra, we'll say 15, 20, 30, 40 pounds of extra mail on your uh, satchel. So for me, the number one thing to accomplish everything fast was casing. Like I said, some cities don't do casing. They let them go do the routes and try to memorize the route. And then probably a month, two months, three months, six months later, they start casing. And then everything that they uh, they did the route, they start memorizing it. In my city, in my actual city, we had to drive around. We had a case. And that's the way we were memorizing. Okay, now this is the street. Even though you could go like this on the mail and you could tell what street. But you're learning little tricks and everything while you're doing that. Because when you're casing, sometimes you don't realize that there's a school that actually comes, picks it up in there like we... We had this university that always comes and picks up their own mail and so on. And what if there's um, mail that is being held all that time that you've been doing that route, you're not going to know that, that specific place. Because uh, some, some people will have uh, mail hold, held like for two, three weeks or whatever. But the moral story is, the, for me, the fastest thing to do is, case, the, the number one thing is casing. The, no, the number two thing, of course, is doing the route. The walking route, I was able to finish them fast then. I used to like, like I said, doing them, especially on hot weather. When it rained, I hated them. Um, the mail is all, uh, it rips and everything. The, the, the magazines, the, the advertisements, AdWords, they call them AdWords, advertisement, all that water in them. Uh, you're all soaking wet. You're jumping over water. Cold, I used to hate cold. I'm here in Texas, uh, Austin, Texas area. I used to hate cold. I'm from the desert. Uh, even though you're from the desert and you stay a lot at home, you don't encounter that cold anyways. Uh, I hate it cold. I still hate cold. Yeah, your fingers and everything. Heat, it was like a breeze. I love the heat because all you have to do is walk on, underneath the trees. So hopefully that helps you on how to be fast on the CCA uh, method and everything and what to expect at the beginning. Uh, the key thing is what to expect is you're nervous because you're on probation. You want to do everything right. You don't want to be injured. I'm not going to say if I got injured. I'm not going to say if I made mistakes. I'm not going to say if I slipped, which I did. Actually, I did all of them. Um, I do feel that the post office, if you're doing a good job, they'll turn a little bit of a blind eye on you. If you do something a little bit wrong because you're doing a lot of things right um, and that's about it on that hopefully you guys understand CCA also you do uh, auxiliary runs basically you pick up all the blue boxes uh, uh, I forgot what it's called but auxiliary is a small route that they add to the uh, collections uh, that sometimes they add to the collections if there's an auxiliary route uh, the second thing that, that they have CCAs doing is uh, Sundays delivering Amazon packages and everything, which I didn't mind because you learn the route, um, plus the money, right? Well, I don't know when you guys are going to be able to watch this video, but the, the pay in the millet, uh, in the post office is $16 uh, at the beginning, 16 something maybe it went up. Uh, it's good pay. Um, I didn't realize it was decent pay until I left, but... I'll tell you a little bit why I left before I finish this video. I left because I wanted to finish my college. Um, I'm a retired military, so I get a pension. Also, I get money for college. So my math was if I do my college, uh, I got my associates after I left, and I'm now going for my bachelor. If I left, I will still get my, we'll say, $10 an hour out of the college. And I got a minimum working job for
for ten dollars or eleven something, that will accumulate the money that I'm doing a little bit more than uh, going in the post office. And I don't, and I'm not tired because you'll be tired in the post office. I was so tired on the walking routes that I used to go to Popeyes, McDonald's, and everything. Go to home, go to the house. I was so tired that I all I want to do is lay 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 down, sleep, wake up, ready to work. That's it. Uh, of course, laundry, ironing uniform, and everything because. I don't want to look like a dirtbag. 